Is there anything, me or anything that is not right that needs to be corrected? That needs to be addressed. If not, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the August 3rd meeting, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is the master plan. Um, Charette results. What do you guys think? Um, so there were maybe a few new ideas, but a lot of the same stuff we talked about. Mm -hmm. The ones I read, yeah. yeah, pretty much same. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't think there was a whole lot of anything that stuck out as far as new ideas or things that we haven't already seen between the surveys and conversations that we know of down there already. Um, you said one gal had the one where she was suggesting picking up trinkets from north, I think. Lighthouse Museum, which I've driven by that many times lately and thought about it. There's probably some pieces there that might be novel novelties. I don't know. A thought. My only concern with that was just um, as far as that was just the upkeep of them and trying to maintain them and things like that. The more stuff you start putting in there, the more stuff to lead whack around and yeah. to maintain and to paint and to all those things. That was one concern I had on it and my objected to it. No, but are we gonna bring the whole museum down there? No, I, I thought there. about the bigger pieces that might be something you do. They would be uh, something kids are gonna climb on. And, you know, I don't know. Yes, so go ahead. It's probably more trouble than it's worth, I don't know. But it's, I suspect we, we're going to get pushed to consider it anyway at some point. But. It, we probably will, but my concern is it's how much vandalism is yeah. that stuff going to take? How much um, how much work is it going to be for us to maintain it? All those things, you know, if he's looking to get rid of it, how much has he maintained it over the last little bit? How easy is it going to be to move? Who's going to move it? All those things. I just, that was one concern I had with that. I'm not saying that we table it and never talk about it again, but it is a concern. Yeah, I agree. They almost need a, you know, some service group or somebody to adopt take, that. Take it on as a project. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and maintain yeah, it. There's not done any because... lighthouse groups in there, is there? No, I, I think mean, there's no fun to be a lighthouse group in there, is there? I mean, that's what, you know, I'm just saying that. Yeah. That's sort of still pumping on. Yeah, so, I mean, when I was on a planning commission, we talked about this all the time. Is, yeah. You know, everybody wants a park and all that, but I mean, we have so many, and yeah, you know, it, just too much to take care of. Plus, and it shows in some places. Yeah. So I agree with your statement. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice, but if it turns into a piece of junk, then yeah, then what? Yeah. Um, just going down the list here of the things that we looked at. There, it, it seems like again we're looking at the border's bathrooms. Have you guys heard anything? Because we kind of talked about the boaters' bathrooms and then putting another keyed entrance into between those. I got the tag written price of ten thousand dollars to do that. Put the doors in between those, um, and the then open up the, the bathroom regular bathroom restrooms. What? The bathroom yeah. Okay. Um, that putting that in there, it was it was kind of one of those things where it was. That, and again, the tab the price was ten thousand dollars. So, what another contractor would charge us, or maybe we do it internal or whatever. Maybe we can do it a little bit more cost effective. I don't know. But that was what he said. Um, I've had some people that weren't real thrilled about that. I don't know what you guys have heard out there. I can, yeah. So I haven't heard anything, but I can see both sides of that. It's a if 
you open it to the public and they end up getting trashed like the once it used to be by the marina building then yeah that wouldn't be a good thing but it does alleviate the helps out the restroom situation for the area in general right and one I, a couple i've heard of security issues they don't like the fact that everybody could go in and use the bathroom that they get to use yeah because we had well over the years we had, that was been the main problem when they had keys you know everybody got keys and then that you know, it's like a public bathroom. Right. You know, now it's always a big, a big deal because there's whatever. You know, there's the upkeep wasn't real good as far as you know the people using it. It was very unclean. Not, not that they didn't get it cleaned every day, but it was unclean. It was some gross stuff. In there. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, other than that, looks like there was, you know, some comments about spider control and things like that. We actually today, a uh, guy gave me uh, the name of, it's called neem oil. We're going to try to get some and see if it works or not. You supposedly if you spray that, the spiders don't like the smell of it. And it's just it's biodegradable and everything else. You just put it in water, an ounce to water or like spray from the water, thing all this water and spray it on those dock boxes, it may help. So I'll try anything once to see if it'll work at this point in time because they are a nuisance. We can't get rid of them. So and I don't, every marina you go to, or at least everyone I've been at, it doesn't matter how clean or whatever, you know, those yeah. are, it's like, That's why it's like, like arachnophobia. <laughs> Yeah, well, it is. I mean, it's unbelievable because people don't realize they come out on your lines. That's what they do. You know, the guys, they don't just show up. I mean, they're all over the place. Home defense works pretty good on your boat, but I suppose. Yeah, but we're not supposed to use it. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody. Nick say, uh, yeah, that's where we're going to be coming from. Marine you wrote on the train. It's straight at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could be a I test for that. I got I got chewed pretty well at Presque because you know it's clean marine. <laughs> they saw me going at them. I said, "Will you turn the down rigs on in the morning and see those mothers come climbing out of there?" <laughs> she Shannon, brought them to us. I didn't bring them to you. <laughs> and one item that um, Steve's closing remarks on the storage building down there. What's what's the city's position on looks to me like it crunches the space a bit quite a bit it, it crunches the space quite a bit and until we actually get the master plan done it's pretty hard for us to actually want to commit one way or another to steve's building down there um because who's to say that we don't as part of the master plan find a different thought process like a multi-function building or something like that that is better suited down there as opposed to committing one building to one group and one group only you know is there a better use of space or whatever because when the <clears throat> marine sanctuary uh, had received uh, and had it withdrawn medc uh, location there included uh, some prep and so forth for the sailing and also steve that time was talking of the building, a building similar be located in, in and around sailing school where they, you know, do it in the river. But again, that fell through. So, you know, that's not a solution either. Right. But, and that's, you know, we, we're not ready to commit completely to that. I'm not telling you it's not a, a great idea and that the sailing school wasn't a great thing, but it's until we know the entire plan, we really need to commit any location in the marina to anything until we're completely done to feel that that's what we should do especially with it, it's it's not like you're planting a tree or something this is something pretty right. pretty damn long term so <clears throat> and we may well have that answer by the end of the year but you know are there other 
function. So we want in that building. I could see that as a multi-use building, mm -hmm. depending on what we want to do with, um, you know, the future shop or whatever it might be. And that's, you know, that's a portion of it. Is I just, I don't think until we have a really firm idea what we want down there, I don't know if we're ready to say, yeah, yeah, that's a great spot for a hundred by a hundred and thirty by forty foot building. It's, it's not like it's a shed. It's it's a pretty major commitment, a pretty major chunk of property. So yeah, I mean during the charrette, his drawings were up there. Not one person said anything about it. But it's, yeah, it's, let's take care of the obvious things first. I don't know how committed the entire sailing group is to it because you always hear Steve pushing it. I don't know how. Right. If, if everybody I mean, is it's, on board with it's that. a pole barn, it's not like yeah. Yeah, it's a big fancy facility. And this is kind of the third location. The first location was right up from the flag in. They were gonna build yeah. it around and circulate around the uh, the uh, boaters lounge and that's where our original discussion was. Then it was at the marine sanctuary, now it's over there. One thing with the it's happening or at least allegedly happening, fish and wildlife may leave. And that's the building that was renovated right next to the sanctuary and it's high ceilings and so forth and so on. What happens there, I don't know, but that's probably another possibility. Well, so the thing about that is they're paying for rent and sailing school would not be in a position to do much. So I, I can't see contract. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's, I mean, it'd be great, great for us if that came available, but uh, I just don't see that happening. Um, anybody else have comments on that? Or? Can, skipping back just real quick, there aren't such things as spider brushes, I found them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the dock hands can use those. That's yeah, never been done them. here. Yep. Okay. Well, That's all. Okay. Well, I just no, I know I what you're that, talking about. Yeah, because the other day I was told that I should get a spider brush instead of spray. I know there's such a thing. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know if it's specifically called a spider brush, but there are these little more rigid. You know, just I know that. I know that, but I'm just saying that would a piece. You know. So when you get a no, spider for those, yeah, we'll get everybody a spider brush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was all. I don't want to, I don't want to carry on anymore. But I, sometimes I think you need a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the, on the yeah. Yeah, my board. back of my hand doesn't work real well. Yeah. <laughs> on the forty by one thirty building, I mean, is it just storage for the most part, or? Yeah, it's pretty much what it is. It's for them to be able to park the anglings inside. Classrooms during the summer. Classrooms during the summer, but I mean, if you look at it the way it's where he's got the pictures and everything else, it's it's primarily for them to store the boats for winter. Mask storage and the ability to pull the masks are the sails off if it's been raining and hanging from the ceiling and things like that. Yeah, I guess I would take bigger would be you were going to do something like that, go way bigger than, than that, I guess, for storage for the city itself. Well, and that's, you know, I know everybody says, well, we should look into rack storage. It's way expensive in the insurance. Well, um, yeah, I don't know about necessarily rack storage. I think indoor storage, indoor heated storage is it's just premium and everybody will take it. It's not. But what inside so. the building are you looking at? And then what do you do with your parking? And, you know, that's parking's a premium down there during the summer. You've been down there, you've seen right. it. Okay. So at yeah. that point in time, you put up that building you're talking about. It gets to the point where you don't have parking, then. So then what? Right. Because that is our day use parking also. So then you start eliminating a lot of your day use parking by. A huge building like that. So I see, I see both sides of it. I, mm -hmm. I know at council when I was there the one time, the guy thought that, yeah, take that building and just keep building because we want indoor heated. And it's like, 
you you block your complete view of the water, which is one of the things we're always fighting for is trying to open up the waterfront view from the roads and from the street so people see it. And then you start looking at not having that parking, it, it starts to diminish what's available to us. Because to get it big enough, you basically have to get to the point where that entire end is nothing but parking you know, along Harbor Drive. Or uh, building, I should say. Yeah. Along yeah. Harbor yeah. Drive. Yeah. You know, if there was a different spot or something like that, or if we had more room down there, maybe it would make a difference. But right now, by the time you get to Lady Michigan, out or her in the park, it's for sure room. Um, potable water bids were due Tuesday, and that was not great for us. Um, it's significantly over budget. So we're kind of back to the drawing board. Uh, I'm working through a couple of ideas right now how to get it done. I got to get some clarification on some stuff, but for them to put pecs in that length and hook up the pedestals, they wanted 40,000. <laughs> That's what I asked him today. I wanted to verify with him that he had priced pecs and I not copper because that was my immediate thought was he had decided to price copper for it and it was pecs. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's just the water. That's just the water. That was none of the electrical boxes, you know, because we had thrown that in there as a possibility in case the bid came in reasonable. And I'm sitting here, I, I kind of know what the price of that pipe is because we had priced it already and it was. Did you did you price PEX A or B though? Is it I, I because I would imagine it's, it has to be a special PEX, it's got to be oxygen barrier mm -hmm. PEX, so that would be, I, mean, I know it, it jumped. In price from one to the other. It, it does, but not not that much. Not that much. Right. You're talking the difference of sixty cents. We go from A to B. Is that just for the seasonal docks? That's just for the docks along Prentice Street. Just those. Just those. Yeah. <laughs> you could go over to the again. <laughs> Well, and that's what we're still looking into it. Like I said, I'm looking at other options right now, but for then it is legitimately seasonal water. It's for five months of the year. Forty thousand dollars is yeah, I agree. We could spend that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that was not a not a happy bid opening. I didn't expect it to be there because we again we priced it kind of in our own heads what it was going to be. In. We were floored, so. Um, anything else that you guys want to discuss from the charade? Kind of going through things. Wi-Fi improvements, we're still working on them. Uh, probably not going to happen until spring at this point in time. We're looking into different options there. Um, yeah, that's the the switch and with a chip in it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> September, January, February. So we're, we got to get two switches for down there and some other things. And anything like that, unless it's on shelf locally with, with somebody, we may get it before the summer. So. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so I just transferred the Frontier internet that's down there right now over to the city for the time being. Um, going to look at some boosters. If this is going to have to be a long-term thing, we'll look at some boosters. If not, like I said, we're working on still trying to improve the Wi-Fi down there. As far as those are concerned. And then the high water issues, probably we got to wait one more year just to see what does happen as far as the environment. You know, I mean, it's receded, but you know, theoretically over the years, is it going to stay receded? We got to wait probably two or three years to make sure, you know, that it's going on the backward swing again. That would be my estimation from looking in the past. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know how much has come up this summer, six inches, maybe eight inches, I don't know, mm -hmm. which is not, normally it's 12 to 14. So That's another thing, you know, because last year we all panicky about the high water and if we kept going this year, I mean, we'd be in a whole nother conversation right now. At least there is some positive there, you know. Yeah, the water's coming yeah. back the other way. Um, comments on hiding the water plant, stuff like that. I um, don't know what more they want there because I've looked at that wall from the docks and the whole back side of it's already been redone. Um, the side, I don't know if you guys noticed, we, we got those shrubs in finally. So in three years, those should start covering that fence pretty well. We shouldn't have that beam anymore. It's cleaned up. It's good to keep it clean. So hopefully that'll take care of some of that. I don't know if you guys have any other suggestions on that. Yeah, I mean, it's there. It's, <laughs> it's there. It's, it's part of the real estate. We have to deal with it. So. Um, the only other one was the culverts through the marina uh, from the other side there. I don't know what you guys' opinion is of those. If that's something we want to put into the master plan as far as a necessity or not. It yeah. seemed to be one person pushing that bus, so. Yeah, questions on it. Just because I think you do get a lot of people that ice fish and use that in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And whether you guys think that would affect the ice in the wintertime or could affect the ice in the wintertime. Oh, you mean blowing it out? Well, and we can, I mean, yeah, so yeah, if we can improve the, the water quality in the harbor, I think that would be, I would care about the ice fishing people. Because they could still go they like where the plumbers yeah. are. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Those places. yeah. I mean, there are. There's, yeah, there's other spots, and that's it, yeah. go up and down the river and stuff like that. It's and that's what I didn't know what you guys' thought was on that. Oh, I'd love to see the water be better. <laughs> no, yeah. so, I lost my truck in the lake the other day there too because the docks are so slippery there. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know that it's going to help. How, how do yeah? How do we know if we do that right. that it's going to help? Yeah, so I think that's helps. a big study in and of itself, just as right. somebody proved that that will help. I'm sure it'll help. Well, or even just ask, uh, well, I know maybe Paul would be, LeBrack would be somebody to ask, or whoever's running the boat, how frequently can the glass bottom boat not sit on the shipwreck in front of Thompson mm -hmm. Beach because of the water clarity? It just That just depends on which way the wind's blowing from. I mean, if, if the river water is being shoved up on shore, it's tan and colored water all the way down to Blair Street Pier. Yeah, and that's and that's just to me. It's we've got water quality issues kind of up and down the shoreline there. I don't know if all we're going to do is pull that into the marina. Then. Yes, I, yeah. I guess my thing is if we had some kind of circulation in there, would it? Would it help? Keep the keep the weeds down. Weeds down or something. Yeah. If we do it, we because obviously it's not going to be a cheap endeavor. Mm -hmm. If we do it, is it going to mm -hmm. do anything for us? I mean, my, we, yeah, because they're going to do a study. Of it. What's basically going to happen is it's to uh, be the the thermal value of the water. For example, our marina gets to be like eighty five. Our steels marina gets. It's 72 is hot up there, 74. Usually it's 68 in that marina. So I think the weed growth has more to do with temperature coming in and out of there. I mean, you know, somebody, you know, that's an expert in botany could, you know, they'll get to do a study on it, but that's that's more so than water flow because I don't think there's, I'm trying to think of them, you know, Paris has got water flow in their marina. So I'm trying to think of. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, I know Pressfield doesn't have water flow because that's you know I don't know about Rogers, so Rogers I don't. You know, you're correct. I don't Rogers know. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know if that if they think that's the thing, but I think it's basically temperature, not necessarily for the water. weeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for the weeds. Right. Yeah. And even the clarity of the water would be, you know, the weeds. Yeah. 
cause that basically with the movement around. I almost think you have to go back to the pole channel if they get in there almost that width to get enough water in to really influence. Correct. And I don't know that cost of that's going to And be then you just have a bridge over there. Yeah. We're probably get talking get like hundreds of Rogers thousands of to get some, that redone. Or back on the island, know. you get some wave action inside yeah. of the yeah. harbor. Yeah. It always used to be a challenge <laughs> coming in there. I think the nutrients are a big factor too. Um, you know, I think you're probably right about the temperature and combination of that. So, you know, I don't know what our nutrient inputs are from um, runoff, but that could be a big issue that we're not looking at. And so, I, I, my email from back from here on high is an offer to do a presentation. That could be something that they're looking at. And I mean, we could do some. Perhaps I the one that could do some tests, just um, I mean, not even pay, you know something that we have to pay for, but just a you know watershed organization. Um, you know, there's tip of the minute over on the west side that does that, but that may be a start just to see what our actual water quality is and what the issues are. So, and, and I mean, it's a shallow Thunder base, much more shallow than around other harbors. So I think. Yeah, the temperature and nutrients are yeah, a lot of environmental factors. That's the degrees, and I'm going there. <laughs> yeah, right. Helping the power monitors the temperature of the water. Yeah. The yeah. Right. Organisms, you know, there's some. There's a, a lot of gauge that's not really red there, but because I don't know. I mean, if if there's a mean, if there's an average temperature that coming out of the river, and you still punch a hole through there, you're probably really not going to change the temperature of the water. In the harbor below that, mm -hmm. as a target, you know. So maybe if it's coming out of the river, like Ed's saying, it'll be a lot cooler than below 80s. I mean, it's all pretty shallow up. The only thing that I can find for information to see if it's even going to help us, as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. When they build it, was there ever was there ever you know because. The DNR is big on papers. Was there ever paper done in circulation in the harbor after it was redone as far as, I mean, not may, maybe none of the river water even goes into the harbor for all we know. I, I mean, when they open the chutes, right, true. when we open the chutes, I don't know if you guys see it. You know, I don't see it that much when I'm going out because I'm under, you know, but out on the end where you guys have the Englands, when they got all the gates open, do you feel that? You know, because that should be sucked in there. Well, or yeah. is it creating the Nigerian siphon where Some, the river yeah, water somewhere in the water? Right. Check and see which way the water's even going at the culverts. Yeah. Is it going from south to north, or is it going from the riverside from north to see, south? See, there's no culverts that go all the way through. I was going to say, is it even open? It's not even open, is it? Oh, the I culvert? thought there was a culvert there. It's a small yeah. No, the culvert's open. I mean, there's a culvert there, but wasn't that our... I think there's a couple of them there that... But they've caved in. They've collapsed. I don't yeah, know. So that tells me then I would think that it's probably pulling from, it was originally pulling from the lake side mm -hmm. in that way and it pulled sand in there and just Whatever. build it. Yeah, because when we were on the committee before, this was five or six years ago, that your man told us that's not even, there's nothing going on there. Let me look into that and see if I can find some record of those know, callers, I mean, maybe we can going just get the callers Yeah. It was that was our assumption water that, that, that culvert's no good anymore. So. Your idea of here in Pines was a good idea, and that's yeah. what they do. I mean, yeah. they're always in the Right. Well, and, and that's not, water quality isn't exactly there, um, right. but but there are organizations that they work with right. that I think, you know, and, and there are even monitoring systems now that um, can continuously monitor during certain points. So I think. The, the bottom line is, um, with all this discussion, you know, it's a good discussion. I think with the potential costs of actually doing something to work on whether it's circulation or water quality, we need to know what the problem is. So, so study it, and then before we spend two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> well, we're pretty shallow, you know. It's a man-made harbor, and they, I remember when they they dredged that thing, all the goodies that came out of there. there was, was, uh, Mafia cars back in the day. Yeah, there wasn't any bodies. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. 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 None of my uncles. <laughs> okay. Well, anything else on the charrette follow-up? I think it was a good exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I guess, I was pleasantly surprised at the number of people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was impressed. So there is an interest. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where are we at, Eric? With as far as what's next on the master plan? So I'm going to have chapters one through two ready for the next meeting. Okay. Um, and possibly work into some of the um, more questions that I have on the actual implementations and projects you guys want to move forward with. Okay. What is chapter one and chapter two? So chapter one is going to be the introduction, the order market analysis, <laughs> and the executive summary. Okay. And kind of just to tell you a little bit, like the order market analysis, the reason I wanted to do that was to show that it can be marketable in the area as far as slip numbers and stuff like that. And also show, for example, they come in three months out of the year, spend thirty dollars per day downtown. What would be brought in revenue to the city? So that's just kind of a brief summary. I don't want to go yeah. on and on about it, but yeah. And then chapter two is the executive summary. So that will be your overall arching goals. Okay. Oh, not a problem. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Still on track for we don't really just here. Yeah. Okay. So chapter one is like a cost analysis, and I mean as far as from yeah, that's going to be your introduction. Um, like for the introduction, I have nearby amenities, um, which I think can kind of support. Are you amenities. breaking that up by usage? In other words, when I'm like, you know, I don't want the different groups, but for example, if we're there, the charitable guys. Are you breaking up? If they ask any of us to give, if you ask any of us to give surveys as far as cost analysis to our people, you haven't had any. No. So a lot of this data I'm actually kind of just developing okay. because a lot of the data is hard to find. Um, and you, the problem I'm having too, not just with this master plan, master plans in general, is COVID and statistics right. really kind of get. Confusing when you're trying to do a five year study. So, because I know we did have the last one through Michigan State Extension, but I mean, we're going way back. Okay. You know, probably 90, 93 or whatever, but it sort of flabbergasted the community and the city council because they were going to kick us out of the marina until they found out how much money we brought in. And that's just us. I mean, that's not the sailors and you know, pleasure for this. Yeah. Well, and, and that's something we can talk about too, with like the numbers, like $30. I mean, $30 is, is kind of a base. But I mean, that's per day. I mean, I'm sure there's people that okay, spend a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> a lot. They want to spend $30. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's a case for your bag audience. Yeah. <laughs> you need fuel, you're going to spend. <laughs> yeah, don't even go there. Yeah. yeah. You're good? Okay, any, yeah. any questions for Eric as far as that was concerned? Uh, user survey. Anybody take a look at <laughs> Recently. I can't see it right now. <laughs> I had a link on there and it's missing, so. Um, the user survey, did you guys take a look at that? Go back and look at those. Last time I looked, we had 29 response or 23 responses. I don't know where we're at right now, which is kind of discouraging considering casting I sent out 270 postcards to all the users. So for 73 of them to come back, most of them look like they're probably day use fishermen. Um, Overwhelmingly, most of them didn't want to be on a fish cleaning station. <laughs> wow. So, they were going to go to Rider City. Okay. Yeah, don't don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way. I guess uh, I, you know, I not super sold one way or the other on that one, just because there are 
proposing funds to it, you know, like say so that somebody comes in town that they don't have to pay to use fish clean station. However, it's a lot of money to maintain it, so. Um, Mostly day launch people have to be a fisherman, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So do you just up Fishermen or pleasure boaters. Just up the launch fee? Good luck. We, we actually had to cut it here three years ago for the city residents. That was, yeah, we lost like $4,000. Right. I think I remember budget. those discussions. Yeah, yeah, we we have have oh, yeah, don't even go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, don't want, we don't want them back. Yeah, we have a blue hair request for free. <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah, anybody over 60 was going to be allowed free like they do in the past. And, you know, I've been to Petoskey about once a week. I know how many people use that. Yeah. Know, you know, for, yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of free stuff there. But. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, you know, yeah. kind of the things that we're seeing there. Nothing, again, nothing shocking. Nobody's really come back with anything in that. Um, like I said, just more discouraged over the lack of numbers on that than anything. Just because. We hope that we got more responses or whatever. Um, boat storage agreement is next. You can offer free passes to the fish cleaning station. There you go. For filling on the snow. There you go. That'll make happy. Uh, boat storage agreements and seasonal slip agreements. You guys you had a pretty good chance to look at the boat storage agreement. I got a lot of good comments back on that. Um, did you guys get any or see anything else in that that you were concerned about? You're talking about the storage first? Yep. You guys are all good with that. There's nothing in there. Um, Considering I never had one before. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I mean, who knows whether we'll be able to comply or not, but. People will try. People will try. I think that's probably yeah. what we're hoping for. People will yeah. try. Um, one thing I wanted to run past you guys is we're getting a lot of people who are coming in from other harbors and they're like, well, you need to comp us a week's worth of slip because we need to unload our boats. And I'm like, uh, everybody else here is paid, so I'm having a hard time with that. Comping what? Comping the yeah. slip. Yeah, dockage. So, Northport gave us two days. Okay. So what are they asking for? Oh, after you get a if they're there for a week, you comp two days. Well, no, they want me to. Yeah, they were they they're coming in to because they're going to winter store their boat. Oh, okay. oh winter store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, comp winter. two days before, when they get when they get there before yeah. they're pulled out. Well, they want the one couple once a week both both ways. So what they want is not to pay for a slip while we store their boat. Yeah. Yeah, because the Marina Northport owned by the boat yard. So okay. if you're getting pulled out by the boat yard, they gave you like two days. Okay. And again, the Marina was not. There was a canceled boat in there. We did it. So. And I, well, I did to say like me when I come back from Presqu'ile. Okay, if I stayed in charter, okay, then I, you know. There wouldn't be, you know, there'd be like a monthly rate. Right. Okay. But I mean, if I was coming and they could schedule me, sometimes, you know, when I got here, you know, because I'd have, you know, Rich would be like five boats ahead of me. Right. And I'd say, I'd want to get out. And he said, well, just pull over on the wall because you're not using any amenities. You're just standing. And then they pull us. Okay. So I guess that's, you know, that's probably what he did for some of those. Because the, the two that I heard, you know, was some guy at Press Gill spouting off now about, I'm going to bring my boat back and have it pulled and they're charging me two days for coming back to Alpine and store it then. And, you know, and that's, and I don't know, yeah, because I'm sure some of the other marinas do come back. But I well, don't. and that was, that was the guy that wanted yeah. Yeah. five days. Yeah, well, now, yeah, but he told us two. Right. You know, I told him I would comp too, and he's like, well, I need a week. I said, well, we've got our buy to get one free. Well, the thing would be if he came back, theoretically, they should, you know, if he should make arrangements. If he comes back, they should pull it that day. If, I mean, yeah, if they make those arrangements. Yeah. 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 
I mean, that's upside down. Right. You know, like and in my situation. Right, and different. that's what I'm sitting here going, you know, right now we're, we've got room. What happens when we get to the point where we don't have room? And that, that's the goal, eventually, mm -hmm. get to the point where we don't have room. But those are the only two guys I've been in, both sort of, yeah. And I don't know how many of those guys you get. So. Okay. I was just curious if you guys were hearing any anything about that because that was, again, the, they're the ones that are squeaking right now because it's, well, why do we have to pay? And we've never had to pay any place else. And I like called all the way up and down like here, and everybody was like, yeah, no, they just want something for them. All right. <laughs> Any other concerns that you've heard about the winter storage or anything? <laughs> other than it's outside and it's not fenced? Okay, seasonal slip agreement. I know there was a couple concerns over this I've gotten. Um, uh, there was the one uh, I thought we had talked about it is uh, no sailing into the harbor oh. unless you have auxiliary power and that's going to go stay, on there the, yeah okay so you're going to put that in yep i caught that the other day yeah and then rachel mentioned not being able to use a head yeah. when you're in court <laughs> <laughs> so rachel put that in yeah i, I thought that was you rachel <laughs> so, yeah yeah And, Good. you know, I, I get what they're trying to do, but, you know, if you have someone who's staying on their boat, you know, we have pump out facilities there that they can go use. And, and you know, they may go use our facilities from time to time, but in the middle of the night, you know, I, I, I get yeah. out and maybe I fall in the water off my dock or something. I'm trying to get to the facilities. And I'm just thinking that do we really have to say absolutely no to that? We can encourage it. And we, and we talked a little bit about this. Um, encourage them to use the facilities, but not outright say no. What was the rationale? Is this left over from when everything used to be pumped in the lake? So well, and I think that's a, like it. some of it yeah, is that you know you're yeah. not going to dump that way if you're get full or whatever. Um, if you have other facilities or if you have a leak or if you have you know all of those mm -hmm. things so i think we can switch that to encourage it is actually a um hopefully it's uh just a it is actually a requirement when we get into the clean room discussion it is a requirement of theirs to encourage people not to use the heads on their boats when they're in is that how they their verbiage though too that it's encouraged or yeah is it, and i think we can you know that we have facilities and it's so i think we switch it to encourage i i don't know why dnr has it as thou shall not but so fyi people are going to use their heads and well, i wasn't going to go check yeah. yeah i mean now you're going to know well that they are around. Yeah, so and we, that's and that's my thing is you yeah. know what you do you yeah i, I think we switch it to encourage and you have to go check all the time. No, yeah. I was going to use Jeremy. I was going to use Jeremy as an example because he's almost a quarter of a mile away from his yacht and his yeah. kids. Uh -huh. I'm going to say, yeah, his kids. He's yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not that he would do something, but I was just looking at you know yesterday. Yeah. I'm going, holy Christ! If that was me over there, yeah. I'd never make her up. Wow. Right. <laughs> so I've stayed at Marinas, yeah. and in the middle of the night, yeah. Yeah. The head doesn't get used, but neither does the facility. Well, right. Well, no, right. No, no. <laughs> we don't want to know that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so maybe Karen finds will find something to be fast like, for the water. That's right. So, yeah. it, it just yeah, I think the, 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 the encouraged language is appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's the. Yeah. They're going to, well, they're not going to read it anyway. Right. Even decided. some of the other things, too. Oh, we're going to do it. Yeah, but those sailors are the ones that. Yeah, we're the worst ones. 
Yeah. Yeah. for the sailors. Yeah. <laughs> Fletcher. Tell Fletcher that he can't do that anymore. <laughs> Okay, so we're um, other than that one, Jeremy. What was yours again? I can't remember. Uh, just the the way the paragraph on storing trailers in the yes in the harbor or I in the parking lot. Right. We there's we need to clarify that sentence about that about not being able to store trailers in the parking lot. They have to be stored offsite. We just need to clarify that a little bit better. We thought yeah. I think everybody knew what we meant, but it was confusing. It kind of looked to me like you're saying you can't do it, but if you do, you kind of like I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. So it's we don't want trailers stored on the parking lot. However, we will move them over to the city lot for you free of charge. Yeah. Okay, on uh, and I I don't didn't see that in there, and it could have been, but like on stanchions, you know, well the when we when you store the boats yeah. on premises, yeah, okay, most of us have bought our own stanchions. Right. What about the people that haven't bought their stanchions? What I mean, for right. example, everybody can say right. now those are their own stanchions. Correct, and what we said is. Uh, I had a price to do it, and we haven't run across it yet, but I know Rich used to do it where you rent them from the city for five years, and then you own them, which basically just recovers that rate. Because I took mine this year because I bought them. Just to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. Yeah. 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 We don't have them. Right. Right. So even if you own them, unless you take them with you, yeah. You're gonna storm and then in the fall your boat goes on some stanchions. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you'd get yeah, the same you, one. You never get you never got the same one. So yeah. I always took mine because I bought good ones. That's yeah. you know, so well and that's yeah. and that's kind of we've got prices for them ready to go and it's so, kind of there's free shipping at the rate for one boat or whatever. So if we have boats that come in that need them, you and that's what we said, you'll you'll sign a five year rent agreement right. basically with them Which is five years for five okay. for them. Yeah, that was the next question that another guy had, and I go, well, that's not my problem. If you don't have your own stanchion, I think. And that was, we said, we could, you know, that's kind of what we decided is we could do a five-year rental on a rental kind of situation. They're, what were they, probably like $1,000 yeah. for a set of them for the average size boat. That'd be about well right, because mine was seven fifty, and it's been quite a while. Yeah. Months. About two years. I feel like you paid like fifty. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Fifty of uh, uh, stand. Total. Stands? Okay. Because they're like hundred bucks a piece. Around. Fifty to round. It said stand, uh, stand sell for two hundred and fifty a stand for small boats, yeah. three hundred a stand for large boats. Yeah. Twenty-three or two hundred and thirty dollars stands for short power boats. Um, yeah. And some power boats will take 250 for short sail boats, includes freight over a thousand dollars. So what it was, and I think I called them and said, okay, so how many of these do we need? And it was like, whatever it worked out, where it was just over a thousand dollars in stands when we bought them. So. Brings the whole thing of a trailer back into. It does, the trailer, the trailer, the trailer wall. Yeah. That, that was stands, that was the stand on the deal. Yeah, and that, if you years. rent to own them, you're not having to pay that $1,000 up front. Type thing, so. And that was, I thought everybody was paid. Type thing. I don't know. That's what I was. That was what I was. The what everybody was paid for. All the stands. Everybody who had stands right now had them. No, I don't own stands. No, okay. <laughs> okay. You're gonna set mine on the ground. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, that, that's what I had been told. There's because enough stands was, in the harbor for all the boats that were there. there. Yeah, there should be, right? Yeah, they're all here before. So. Yeah. Well, and that's. Again, everybody who did that's what I had been told is everybody yeah. interested in participating. If 
Yeah, you got grandfathered in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> Don't ask about rent. Find money and donate. Theoretically, I'm the only one that owns them because I took mine. So I don't know if you can yeah. Anything, get over the rest of them. <laughs> anything else in the agreements that you guys have seen? I know there are things in there that you haven't seen before or weren't part of the regulations, but those go into that whole clean marine thing that we're going to discuss next. And we'll get into that because I have one question on the clean marine. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we got other stuff. Here. MDNR told us very nicely that we needed to use their system or they were going to start auditing us every year. Their system for and that's their system of booking slips and stuff. Actually, for running everything, all the gas, everything has got to go through those that system now. So, um, we made the decision very last minute here, just before we got started, to not use our BFMA stuff and go into that. So, we've been running that for the last few days. It's been going okay. We, I, in a quick hurry, watched all the videos one night so I can consider myself trained. <laughs> they can run the system, and we have been working with the guys then to get them trained down there, the dock hands. Uh, we were at a zero level on dock hands for a little bit there. I know we're running out of the season, but between our guys trying to take care of some DPW call out stuff, um, raising lower the bridge for Lady Michigan, and take care of the dock house, it was getting pretty tight. I ended up being able to pick up a gentleman here. He actually started today was his first day. Um, we were able to get a document and to help with that. So things are going okay as far as that's concerned. We've got enough coverage now. I'm not going to have to work all weekend. It's making me happy. How's this? Because because field system's terrible. You mean they supposedly have their system? That's the system we have to use is the one that must be on. That's about a two page, I mean, that's a nothing document. No, the document's not bad. What I'm saying is not that, but I mean, if the gas is, flips and everything else, I mean, they're still from 1995. They are still huh? from 1995. I've been told that in the next three years, we're going to upgrade the system. Yeah. Still using copy. <laughs> well, no, yeah, we we were we were upgraded to a building. I mean, I'm just saying that when I go in that dock house, that's the same thing they've had since the beginning. Because one of the guys that ran the marina then said, "Those are the same machines we had." I was pretty excited. It's a touch screen. <laughs> well, they might I was have. Cleaning, I don't. I was they must have. Yeah, I could say they have that. What? Yeah. It's okay. a touch screen. But I I think their seasonal agreement is not only it's a Piece of paper. Yeah, it's just two pages. There's not much yeah. to it. This is more. I mean, I've got one in the car. We, will, in we will use our agreement. We can do that for seasonal. They're just asking all the money stuff to go through okay. all right. their program because then they can they can audit us. I need to take this. This is my new doc in the full water. The fuel's running into the. Okay. I'll keep Mark. It'll be fine. Jason's around. Okay. Yep. Bye. So that's what that is. Yeah, that's both the computer. Um, okay. The NR is asking us just for a little bit more oversight. Than they've had in the past for the Alpina Marina. So theoretically, Rogers has got to be in the same system, right? Yeah, they have to be because that's their system. We are, I guess, there's only about five or six. Marinas, uh, grant made marinas in the entire state mm -hmm. that were not using that system, and we were one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Department of Treasury was not real super pleased with the reporting that we've been doing or been getting for them. So there was some pretty 
crazy questions that she asked me and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Eric is asking questions and I'm like, I don't know. There's no record of how many votes we've had in. There's no records of anything. So it was highly suggested by five people on a conference call that Shannon used the system on September 1st. So um, okay. I think this is going to keep us in good graces with the DNR, which only helps us to pursue those kind of dollars that are available to us. So you may get some complaints about it just because it is kind of different than everything else. One of the things we're trying to still keep is the house accounts going. It sounds like quite a few people still use those house accounts that were there where you get to fill your stuff and then get back first by the check at the end of the month. We are going to do those. I'm trying to get the lawyer to review the documents so we can get those started. Basically, what we're looking at at that is we're going to just um, you'll fill out a form that basically guarantees you're going to pay your bill and we're going to make certain you guarantee that you pay your bill because you're going to give me a credit card to keep on file and if you don't pay your bill after so many days your credit card's going to get it. So um, again just trying to make certain everybody's covered trying to still make things so that they're good for people and usable and everything like they're used to. I don't think I haven't heard any large complaints, but usually they don't complain to the person I'm mad at. So that's what I'm asking you guys if you're hearing anything. Okay. Uh, Clean Marine is next. You had something to say, Ed. Go ahead. Well, two things. One, the the drainage into the harbor, how's that going to fly? As far as what? Well, Clean Marina program. This parking lot, all those drains go right straight into the harbor. That's not an issue. So that, that's not actually, an issue with it? Okay. Yes. I don't know if you read the checklist that I sent no, you. No, probably didn't. Probably didn't. Um, <laughs> I'm not being a smart aleck. I just... <laughs> what, it, what they're asking is that we mark the catch basins. That go to the directly to the lake and they all do so they're all marked i think if you look around there's just well i know that okay yeah great markers now that's what they're asking for okay. is that we mark them so, okay, Kelton, so that, that flies so. yep kelton went around okay. and did that that's all day. i wanted to know what what i have to do is if you look at the m ones in the file all of them have to be 100 percent either not applicable to us or yes okay um, so, and that's why I said look at those. The next section are the recommendations. That's where we have some, some wiggle room. Um, things like not allowing people to power wash your boats or power washing in an area where the sump is cleaned and all of that, we're on there. In order to get the, the certification, we need to be at 75%. That means there's got to be some give and take in this. You guys are the ones that are going to have to go through this and give, tell me what the give and take is going to be because I'm trying to preserve that you can power wash right now to get and to still get to that seven okay. um, percent. That's where you're seeing kind of in the winter storage agreements where you can't just blast paint off the bottom of your boat and go all over the parking lot anymore. That you have to do it so it's tarped and things like that because those were the things we thought we could do i'm trying to figure out a way to go to the you get to the point where we have a recycle program for the oil i've got a theory i just got to see if we're legal the way we could do it i have a contractor who wants the oil to heat his sheep for it heat his dock for winter and i gotta see if we can store it in the totes that he wants it done in. Um, I call them roundup totes, so they're just the great big, huge bulk totes. Mm -hmm. And if we dump it and get it full, if you guys are changing your oil, it goes in that tote. He comes, picks up the tote, takes it away, and leaves us a new one. What about one pull out power wash? Um, that's going to be up to the people that pull the bolts. Right? Yes. Okay. Early in radar, you know, and that's the power washing. Again, I am preserving the power washing. We are not doing anything to prevent the power washing. Right now, the way I'm looking at it, 
I'm doing everything else other than the color washing. It's two questions. So I have to get around those. I have to have of the 70, whatever. Of the 52 questions, I think we have not applicable six or eight of them. And we have to have like 36 that we say yes to. And if we skip color washing, we're awfully close. So there's things there that we're going to have to probably bend on or agree to as far as those storage agreements and stuff like that. Basically, we're telling people, you shall not. You shall not. If somebody comes in, you're, you know, they know that you just can't come in and really, really dump your head in the middle of our marina. You can't, you know, sand black the bottom of your boat and wash it into the lake, things like that. Um, Steve and I reworked that sanding section, but so that it still worked for this, but yet you guys can still sand the bottoms of the boat. So, I mean, we're trying to get things as close as we can, but it's, going to be tight with the color washing cylinder but again you guys just can't casually move your boat over to the corner which we put a sump in and just pump out of to get ready for season and you guys wash your boats on on the water and stuff like that so that's kind of the one we're going to say go to you know we're going to we're going to lock our heels and keep that one where it is but it's going to be some cooperation on some of the other things are the majority of the marinas in, under this clean marine program? There's a lot of them that are. Your city is um, Most of them up in Mackinac are. Because side, a lot of them are. They could save us $1,500 a year. I'm sure. So. Yeah, because Press Cale has said, but they let you power wash the boats in the water. They yes, just and that's, yeah. they, have done, they have done the same thing I'm trying to yeah, do, is they're trying to preserve that power washing, but you probably aren't allowed to stand in the lot. You're not no. allowed to. Or you're tarping to sand in the lot and things like that. You can't park in the lot. So those are those are the things that we're looking at. There. Okay. I don't know if you guys got a chance to read through those. Is there anything that you guys can't live with if we agree to? Always get around some and then, a different way to do it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's always a way around. You know, a lot of it is you roll out a little plastic and you paint the bottom of your boat. You put that plastic down, you sand it, you know, wet sand, whatever it is. So there's ways around it. Is it gonna cost you a couple extra bucks? Probably, but you know, roll out some roll out some plastic. There's really no permitting or anything. I mean if I choose to do that, I have to adhere to the clean up and mm -hmm. tarps and all that. Well, that's just that I didn't even say you absolutely had to tarp. You had to make sure your, your area was clean and before you could move your boat, your area had to be cleaned up. Yeah. It's how it's worded in the storage agreement. So you can blow it all over Hell's Half and Creation for all I care, so long as you clean it up when you're done. To me, the easiest way to do that is flap down the tarp. I'm just going to tell you. Well, that's good because I mean, I know that the, all the drains have you know, oil spills and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But once you know, thinking of clean rain, I'm still thinking it runs right into the rain. It's good as long as you got signage. Yeah, whatever. so long as we've notified everybody <laughs> that that goes into there, and that's okay. You know, they don't want you to change your oil in the lot and then wash it down. Great. So well, we got rid of one of them. And I don't know, are you guys allowed to change your own oil on the lot? I guess I don't know why you wouldn't be. I don't know if anybody does. Well, the one individual that used to and dump it was is gone now. So we don't have to bring that up. But that was, you know, that was sort of a so some most boats it isn't all that easy to do. So yeah. I was gonna say it looks like I'm in reach of it. Yeah. 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 yeah was, most of the guys that do got their own pumps and yeah, you yeah, suck it in and pretty self drain it out. You actually suck it out into another container. So yeah. You carry and that's you guys will, and that's one of them that's gonna be in there that we have to anchor up to when you guys are done with that. You have to recycle your oil. If you get rid of a battery, you have to get rid of the batteries properly. How do we do that? I my thought is is you turn them over to us if they're not going back for 
for return or whatever, you're going to show me proof that you for returned it or that it's coming back to us and then we're going to properly dispose of them out to the recycle center. Um, yeah. the, I mean, it's just things like that. We're going to recycle it. We're going to find a way to recycle the oil. And right now it sounds like sending it to Goodrich's for them to keep their shop for winter is going to work. Yeah, I just, I just went through the whole thing and kind of filled it out and it didn't seem like there was anything that was unreasonable. Yeah, it did. And that's what they told me when we went into it. They wouldn't, you have to pay them their 100 bucks to get that form. But once you get it, and the guy kind of walked me through it on the phone before I even gave him 100 bucks, he's like, there's nothing. He's like, if you're trying to run a good marina, he's like, there's nothing in there that's not going to be doable. I mean, I, I bought an oil spill kit. There wasn't an oil spill kit out by the fuel box. We have one. I mean, that's something you need help with anyways. Anything else on that? Um, nobody did their homework but Steve Wilson. Yeah. What? Yeah. I sent him to you. <laughs> you did. You did right away. I'm sorry. You are correct. I, 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 there were two of you that did it. So. I love fun. You did. You had a good time with that. Jeremy, you're normal. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of you still have homework to do because we are we are going to use that hopefully as part of the advertising. Oh, the nine miles, nine reasons. That was nine my homework. Miles, nine reasons. You give me nine reasons why you're you're going to give me a reason for every mile why you're coming to Elkhorn. I'm, what I'm hoping is nine miles, nine reasons, come find 99 more, and then we'll have basically a web page that pulls up and it will have those hundreds and whatever that is. I'm not doing that right now. I don't care if I'm doing okay. this or not. So, You'll have to send me a reminder. <laughs> I'll have to send you six reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't even get a price from you to work sometimes. <laughs> I don't know how you lowered the gas in the boat. I mean, so I, I have to remind you. That's why he has a sailboat. It doesn't require oh, gas. <laughs> yeah, I've gone to the dark side. Oh, the dark side. He's a motorboat. Before you know it, he's going to be fishing. Yeah, he's on both sides now. I like that. Yeah. He's on the one he's got. I like it. Okay, I'll be your so <laughs> that's just your friendly reminder before winter here that we need to have that. And one of the reasons it's on there is you would not believe how many people have come into this harbor and said, we can't believe how nice of a town this is. We didn't know. So we're not getting ourselves out there enough. Right. Um, I've got a yeah. wonderful couple in there right now who have... Um, he was a harbor master before, so he spent he spent the last three days making sure I don't screw up. And he also has really been pushing, you know, you need to advertise with this group, you need to advertise with this group. The loopers don't know you exist. Um, just all these things, and that's why the nine miles nine reasons is being pushed. I don't know if that would be the actual ad campaign, but it's yeah. getting us that information that we need to get out to the voters. Um, this lady said she never leaves reviews for harbors that she goes into. She's like, you're getting a review because you need it. She's like, you should be full. <laughs> it should. Well, the Jefferson Beach, you know, St. Clair Shores, that area. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you see the boats that come in up there, you know, like Jaws and those guys come for a week and that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, Rich gets all excited when, but there's been, you know, this year there's been huge amounts that, could be coming here. Well, and they did have they did have a from here from Harsons Island. They did invite two boats to stay there for two weeks and invite all their friends mm -hmm. to come there. And they gave them you know they gave them one week of dockage for free just to invite. You know they had like I mean we're talking thirty eight to fifty footers. You know come in and with them. And she planted flowers and, mm -hmm. you know, the, created the people. Host. Yeah, the harbor host. Yeah. yeah. You know that. I'm not going through it. But, but that was, you know, that, you know, 
and, and they might have showed up here. I wasn't here, but you know, I'm, it was quite a bit of use. And uh, one of the things that they've actually suggested to us is like they have these great lakes cruisers will have these meet and greets. Yeah. When we get to the point where we're comfortable, we think Marina is ready. We have a meet and greet here yeah. in Alpena, and we give them a day's free dockage or something like that to get them in here, because that group. Is chitty chatty with each other. You watch them, they come oh, yeah, in and they're time. on each other's mm -hmm. boats and talking and stuff like that. And lots of people, you, you hear it when you come in, you know, can't believe how nice town is. There's a grocery store right there. There's a laundromat right there. There's a happening downtown. There's all kinds of these great things and they're not hearing any of it. And we had, these people are talking back. We had 30 friends of ours from all over the East Coast. Um, we get together with in Florida, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, um, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, up here and stayed at the fire or at the fireside as a group. We stayed there for four nights. And to the last person, I mean it's just not the harbor, but it's to the community. I, I never heard, I mean it was like a testimonial time. I mean it was unbelievable. They thought this was going to be a sleepy little nothing. They love the downtown. They love the retail downtown. They love everywhere they turn. There's water. There's mm -hmm. river water. There's ponds. There's this. There's that. And parks. I mean, they went on and on. I mean, I should have written it all down. I mean, it's just, and, it's, and you walk away. You stand there and you say, "Well, shit. We don't even realize how nice we got." Well, I mean, yeah. these people have been everywhere. Mm -hmm. and and just, I don't know. I was impressed. And there's nothing were. wrong. There's a disconnect somewhere, and we got to get that disconnect closed out somehow. And like I said, these people, I have been on that that dock a lot this summer, getting the names of the places we need to advertise this year. Mm -hmm. So over winter, you're going to see like this nine miles, nine reasons. These things are going to be the things that we are pushing in our advertisements for the fishing. So. You guys be opposed to maybe like a semi-annual or annual, even like a newsletter. Um, because I noticed that the charrette, a lot of people that came, you guys were explaining to them, well, didn't you know that we're going to be working on this, or didn't you know that we're going to be working on that? Um, you know, something small, whether it's to start the year, like, this is what's in our capital improvement plan. Here's your seasonal, you know, dock receipt, and here's a newsletter, or semi-annual year, however you want to do it. Um, and on the transient side, I think it would help too because it would get those people that are like, ah, you know, we went to Alpena two or three years ago and it really wasn't my thing. Well, I think that newsletter might be like, well, they made improvements. Let's at least check out. Right. So. And that is actually one of the things that a couple from Harbor City mentioned to me. They've been, they've been back four times this summer. They love it. Yeah. They've been back four times this summer and, um, Every time they come here, they mention, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do, you know, and really nothing that we don't know, but that was one of the suggestions is, hey, you need to get an uh, email list and start sending out these newsletters or whatever. So I agree. We need to get some more information out there. And that's what we were really hoping. How many emails do you think we have, Cassie? Yeah, you know, and there's 88 seasonal voters. 88 seasonal voters. So well, I think you can give credit to your staff too that has helped make those changes as well. You mm -hmm. know, like when you go through everything that's being done, you, know, you can really give credit to those people that worked on those projects as yeah. well. Yeah. That might not normally get credit. Get credit. Plus, we got zero help from. The convention and visitors, you know, which you know, should be doing. Are they? Are, yes. Huh? She, her, and I have had three really good conversations because part of Nine Miles Nine Reasons is for me to be able to sit down with her in. She's, in, she's involved with that. Yes, she, she told me she's like, if you follow through, you'll be the first harbor master. Well, yeah. So <laughs> she's been like a non-entity all summer. I mean, I'm just saying. And she's. Know. She's Nothing. offered. I couldn't say she. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's how it used to be. I'm mean, yeah. going back, you know, they used to go to all the shows. They used to promote the same thing you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, everybody knew 
you know, because it was two marinas and it was right. Warnicke's in here, you know, or, you know, Park Beach Point. And they were all advertised big time. And that's what she said, you know, these will buy the mailing list. Well, yeah. she's going to put up like that map we talked about at the okay. last meeting. Well, that's there. good because that. So they are, they are stepping, she is stepping up. She is more than interested to talk to us. It's just a matter of getting there. Um, anything else on that? Okay, um, Marina Pride Committee. We've talked about that a couple times now, just briefly. Um, is that something we want to pursue? What do you guys think that looks like? Is that something that we're interested in doing? You know, having people come down and, and spend a little time in the marina and doing some work or something like that, saying, hey, we need some volunteers to um, putting together that committee to do those kind of things. I think it's a great idea if you get it's getting the right person to champion the mm -hmm. project. And that's you know right now if we had a committee that would come down and you know BYOB bring your own brush, we could paint the railing out on the break wall mm -hmm. one Saturday or something and, and do things like that. Um, I don't know if you guys think the voters would be interested in something like that. There are probably some. Okay. Um, Is there enough to make it worth looking? Painting, painting the fish cleaning station. Yeah, oh. painting the fish cleaning station. There yeah. wasn't too many people that showed up for that. No, five, four and five, pretty dedicated, but, you know, but still, you know, you could at least, like those groups, you can embarrass them to wear, you know, get off your dead button. If not, you're going to have to pay to do all this stuff, you know, kind of thing. I mean, not saying that that's what we give them, but, but you know the people so too. So. Is there is the garden club involved in any of the plantings down in the harbor? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> um, they were they not, do, I mean, they do a nice job. Yeah, a lot of places, and I don't, I didn't, I didn't just ask. Yeah, funny you should mention that because I went and stole some flowers from the rain garden over on Ninth Avenue at the water tower. And when I was there, I didn't realize they were there. I was in there with my garden chair snipping some flowers for a retirement party. And she's like, hello, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> and of course that was Friday. So I had my casual casual yellow shirt on that day. And I introduced myself. She's like, oh, I remember you now. And she was talking. She's like, you're the new Harvard master. Hey, she's like that wall over there. Mm -hmm. She's like, did you guys ever do anything with that? I said, well, we've been trying to clean it up. She's like, well, that's our next project. Bingo. So. They are coming. Um, she emailed me even and said, yep, we're committed to this. I talked to the girls and we're going to be there. So Kelton has been spending mm -hmm. his week or his time on the marina, pulling out the big shrubs, getting things whacked back. Uh, Don Lancaster walked through with me the other day and told me what to do to everything to get things back in shape. So we're getting close. Uh, so they're going to be huddling on to site and, and giving us a hand trying to get that wall back into shape um hmm. because it, it started out with i was cutting her purple foam flowers i said hey if you're ever going to get rid of some of these I, i'd like to take them to the marina and that's how that all started so i think we're going to get some plants moved in and stuff like that to kind of finish that wall off from them uh don lancaster has volunteered to come down and, and kind of guide us along as we're going to make kind of the wrong direction as far as that's concerned. So that's kind of nice. Um, but there again, it's just Good. another Marina Pride type thing that we're, you know, if we can get everybody to come in one day. And these ladies, I think the youngest one is 58. And they're trying to move all that mulch. Yeah, on right. So if they're going to be there one day, can we get some Marina Pride members there to, you know, help move mulch and stuff like that? Make things happen better. That it would be, unfortunately, it would be you guys spearheading this. It would be you guys pushing, pushing the boat for lack of letter, trying to get these people on board and coming and stuff like that. So that's why I'm asking you guys, because you guys are the ones that are probably going to have to push this to get it to happen. If you think it's worth us pursuing that. Um, putting together a meeting where we have these people come in and talk about, you know, the what the eight of us come up with as Marina Pride members projects that we could do. 
Thoughts? Well, I think it's a good idea, and I think you in, invited a core of people, and maybe maybe some of those garden club people would be an influence on. They might know people that would mm -hmm. get excited about something other than flowers and carry yeah. on with us. Well, and that's what I'm wondering is if you you put out there, you know, we've got these 50 emails right now. People who want to be involved in the meeting, or do you put out to them, you know, we're we're looking at this group. We'd like to have an informational meeting. We have some projects in mind. Let's have a meeting. You know, let's have a meeting about it or whatever. Is that something we want to pursue? Yeah, I think so. Do it. Would nice do it at the art club or something where you can have a nice place to meet anyway and casual. Well, and we had 68 people at that meeting, so I mean, there's 68 people who are concerned or want to be involved. So. Um, we've got the email addresses, we can put the notices out, you know, so I will look into what we think we can do and I'll get with you guys via email here. Is Dawn kind of a leader in the garden club group? She is not. She actually works independent of all that. Okay. Um, she just casually went out and adopted about five or six flower beds in the city and has been taking care of them. She, like I said, she walked through with me when she was mm -hmm. at the marina the one day. And just said, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, you know, trying to help me get there. Years ago, I think she did the flowers, didn't she they? Did. Yeah. Yeah. Pots yeah. On. Mm -hmm. Well, and she did all of the, she had actually planted that wall. She was like in tears and walking mm -hmm. over there. That's how bad it was at the time. Yeah. What and types of things are you thinking? Like that railing needs to be painted. So if we could set it up where everybody, you know, we could get a group that would be willing to go out there a few times and paint that railing. So does that need to be what? Wear brush first? Like what? No. We, we just slap a coat of paint on it. Slap a coat of paint on it. In all seriousness, we slap a coat of paint on it. To me, you cut two slits and a piece of plastic, slide it over there. Get out there with your brush and have at it, and then when you get that one done, you slide that plastic off, you slide it down, you do another section. If everybody did five sections and we had 10 people, that's 50 of the I don't know how many that are up. It's a step in the right direction, and then my people could go through that next week and cut and edge the plates that come off in the house so that we don't, you know, it's just production fast work. Right. With um, some sort of press release or something just saying we're looking for groups or organizations to help leave the marina. Definitely could do a press release. Okay. So, so. Thank you a lot of different school groups, mm -hmm. church organizations, or Boy youth Scouts group. or whatever. That... Yeah, Boy Scouts, uh, or Youth Corps Volunteer. I don't know what they are at school. I don't know if they got there. Um... I don't know. They, they told my kids they had to volunteer and my kids ran in the other direction. I couldn't tell you what they were. <laughs> All your early college students have to volunteer. Yeah, I was just going to say, there's a lot of kids. So, I mean, if you got kids out there, and that's all who are usually paints it is our summer students go and paint it. So, it's, it's tedium work that just needs to be done, and go down and paint, go, go down and paint, go. And if you can get a group down there that's just willing to kind of go down and get a, get a coat of paint on it, mm -hmm. I can get the paint. We save coffee cans. Put the paint in it. Like a joke, bring your own brush, get down there and brush it on, and away you go. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth pursuing these five mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll start looking at that. That could be our first project, is just to do that railing, and we'll see what kind of response we get. Um, critical issues. Go to the bottom of the list, which is kind of nice every once in a while. The critical issues list we have, we've been working on. Rachel and I talked about it the other day. I, before I was the one pushing, pushing what the critical issues were. We kind of went through, I evaluated, I said what the critical issues were that we needed to get addressed and get addressed immediately and went from there. I'm not running the place. So now I think it's somebody else's turn to walk through and tell me how to do my job because before it was me telling the operator what needed to happen now i think i'm the operator you guys need to walk through and tell me rachel is willing to be one of those people that walks through the marine and says we need to fix this we need to do this this is what we consider immediate need critical 
So I'm asking for one, one or two of you guys to consider doing that with her to basically do that walkthrough and come up with the new critical issues list of things that we feel need to be done immediately in the room. Um, because we still have our six pages we're working on, mm -hmm. but we've done quite a bit of it or we've been working on it and focusing on it. So now it's probably time for that next batch of critical issues. So I need a couple of volunteers who are willing to step up and do that. Okay. I'd probably do that, I'd volunteer. Okay. And I have no problem with it as long as, when are you gonna plan on doing it? I, I don't know, I have to get with her. It'll be during the day. Oh no, I'm, I don't mean that. I meant what, what time period, like in the next two weeks or after that? I would like to get that list as soon as I can, just because that, we're, we're running out of days to be able to work out yeah, there. That's right. So the more stuff we can. If, yeah, if you can arrange in the afternoon, I'd be, you know, you can put me down as maybe a maybe if you don't you know, because I'm booked until the 20th of September. Right. Can we just email you so yeah. or that or just That's fine. Yeah. so she wants to do a walkabout and kind of get a feel. Yeah. Okay. That, oh, get a feel. Because that's what the people are stopping me for, you know, when yeah. I'm down there saying, hey, you know, mm -hmm. I said, hey, wait, you know, it's like that. Yes. Yeah. What do you do? Because then if it's, you know, you're not told enough, yeah. you, know, you tell her one thing, and you I mean, tell her the same thing. Tell her the opposite thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm ineligible right now because I didn't do my nine miles. Well, you did, yeah, you did. Well, 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 you did. You know, I've got right. it with Al that's willing to do it. If there's somebody else, let me know over here in the next. Well, I'm week willing. It's just says when. You know, just put me down and okay. send in. Uh, you know, if you got more than one, that's no big deal. But. Okay. Well, and Don and Steve aren't here, so I'm just thinking if I had a couple, one at least one, I've got one, so one to two yeah. committee members. Right. I got one and a half right now, as far as I'm concerned. Right. And they all can call me. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about all time this so. when you're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Well, and that's what if I've got yeah. Al's definite, then we'll get a uh, time that right. Rachel and Al can get a lot of And then I'll find out what it is and if it's available yeah. for somebody else. Yeah. Please you please can do a half slice. Half 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 half. Yeah. You should have a sailor, too. Sailor. No, no offense. Well, mechanical you're a double mechanical wizard. That's what you need. Sword and wood. What boat did you buy? Or was you playing for? Did yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. I was okay. I was wondering. Does it start you out of started? I've had it a couple times. No, I don't mean that. I mean, you know, you know what's failed that you can turn yeah. the keys? I, I'm just curious as to are we all set with Arlie and Reed from the same Oh, Martin? that's the other so, thing, too. Yes. Yeah. Marina. Yeah. Now, are they going to be doing mechanical stuff there, or are they going to be yes, on the road? Yes, they have their oh. own independent um, business that can do marina stuff. As part of their agreement for this year, we have uh, let them have space in Bay 3 to work if they want to. Okay. So they've got the ability to work in Bay 3 right okay. now, rent free for the season while they're getting things taken care of and stuff. I know he was doing mechanical work on one boat earlier today. And then what about the materials in the store? Materials in the store, according to Rich, that is going to be put in sale or going out of business sale starting There was next a sign up today, I just saw. Oh, it was early. Going out of business, 7th through the... Yeah, after okay. Labor Day here. Yeah, okay, because that's what's going to probably yeah. acquire quite a bit of it. There was things that uh, I think they already went through and kind of acquired back and forth, things that we wanted, things that they wanted. Uh, Rich and I on that last day kind of walked through and I bought a couple things um, that were in the shop or whatever, the sale racks. And well, there was things that he just wasn't, he's like, it's value if you have the building, but it's no value to sell it. Like, shelving and stuff like that that we i agreed to leave there was an air compressor there that he sold me fire sale style that works good if we have a flat tire are you looking looking at a retail some level of retail parts sort of a thing yes that will happen this winter once i can breathe yeah. um I'm going to, I want to talk to Mike Muller and see what, if he can tell me what fair market value rent is. 
to some extent on a building like we've got right now because basically all are going to be is leases and find out what kind of what fair market value rent would be in a building like that send out a request for proposals for companies to give us a proposal to come in and do the services we want i'm thinking mechanical a store a marine store and then if those two have not taken up all the space that we look at options for what another business could be in there paddleboard rental or whatever i'm having some work done up at sand bay marine which is the one up on 23 and 638 on yep. the corner and I, I just go in there and the retail space is so inviting and the mm -hmm. shop is so inviting i mean yeah. god you can eat off the floor in the shop mm -hmm. And I, I know they didn't do all the setting up the, the shelving and all that themselves. I'm sure they had a, some company or somebody that supplies all that stuff come in and set it up for them. And that's what that place needs. I mean, just a. Well, in all honesty, I'm going to call West Marine over. and ask them if they're interested in coming out here. Yeah. It's not going to bother me in the least. I've, I've mm -hmm. already called the guy in Petoskey and asked him if he wants a micro store. Well, here. the one I Bay City is a good one. Bay City. West they're, Marine. They're the second in the Midwest. Okay, well then I'll that, call them. I mean, no, I no, I'm just saying that's, but I mean, that's the one everybody, because I work for those companies that mm -hmm. go, you know, Petoskey and Traverse City, but Bay City is the one that knows what's going on. Okay, well then I'll call them, you know. know it's a big jump from the city to around the horn to Well, and there's Petoskey. a kid, there's actually a kid from here, Chris Taylor, that actually sets those all up. Mm -hmm. It's up in, in the UP, but he, John Taylor's son, he used to be the principal. Well, there was another individual from the area yeah. that doesn't isn't here anymore. They're interested in coming back to the area, so there's a possibility there. Oh, yeah. There was good. There, Sounds good. two good. other people, individuals that talked to me and said, hey, yeah. when you send those out, make sure you send them to us. Um, I'm going to go out to San Bay and Dodge yeah. and all of them. Because San Bay, you know, house. is probably about half the size of this room and they've got it set up, you know, I mean, and they can nice order them because that's the other concern, you know, like Ellen and I both said. But at least when you walk in there, you know where to find stuff. And that's, you know, I think well, that's... Kind of city. It's yeah. tiny, but yeah. there's a lot of yeah. stuff. Well, and that's why I said, you know, if somebody doesn't want that many square and they can put something together at that point in time if we want to put a third business mm -hmm. in there okay you know we can look at that option um building is a lot of work i'm getting a price i'm trying to get a price to see if we can cite it or paint it if we cite it i can probably go after a facade grant from the dda and i'm arguing that there's multiple facades so maybe we can do that well, at least if you do decent siding in the last 15 or 20 years versus yes. painting it at 75. <laughs> yeah, painting it looks like it sheds about every two years. So those are kind of some of the things we're looking like at. Okay. Um, so any good. other comments from you guys? What? They picked it up anyways. I guess when I left a voicemail message, somebody finally went and looked at it. A short one. I was just really excited that somebody, like, I had I found a voicemail. Yeah. Did they pick it up? Okay, because I, I called trying to find the human that you would call for that. And obviously, there are no humans that work at the Coast Guard, as close as I can tell. So I finally got a voicemail after three days of calling. I finally found a voicemail and I left a voicemail, and now you guys have said the markers gone. I'm like, yay, somebody listened to the voicemail. It's a good matter of the yeah, Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It went all the way down. No, it's this it's part below the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Worst case yeah. scenario. Yeah. Anything from staff? Yeah. 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 Steve just wants to go home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next meeting is October 7th. We'll just keep discussing the master plan and anything else that comes up in between. And that's where we got to do our homework. You have to do your homework. I would think the new critical issues will probably be compiled, compiled by then okay. because Cassie's awesome like that. Okay. And I'll try to get in home. Um, is there anything else? As for German. 
All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Yeah, yeah, you have to go back to the facts. Has anybody ever said no? <laughs> yeah. I'm keep talking. I'm in the third meeting. Yeah. Uh, That's what you retired guys can do. Yeah. Well, just, you don't <laughs> say no one. Chris, I got a call for.